everyone my name is Evie Lupine welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all today I should probably just get into it because I have some news I have some terrible terrible news the public the vanilla public they know about day callers Yep, you heard that correctly, even though I just whispered it. The mass media has caught on to our little charade. The cat is out of the bag, or out of the gimp suit, I suppose, if you are a kitten player that likes bondage, but they know, they have sussed it out, that your cute little necklace with the heart lock on it and the crystals, yeah, that means you're into some kinky shit. And they don't fully understand what a day caller is, but they still know about it and they have some questions. But how did this happen? Who or what happened that led them to know about this kind of open secret within the BDSM world? Well, it all started, I think, with a head of lettuce. And no, really though, jokes aside, over in the UK, they have been having some leadership issues. And no, we did not just teleport into the alternate universe Evie Lupine British politics channel. <laughs> Somehow, British politics and BDSM have combined together in this story. It'll all make sense in a moment. So back in September, they had a leadership election and Liz Truss became the new prime minister of the UK. And outside of the typical discussion over what her policies might be, how her government would handle the cost of living crisis, there was also a lot of tabloid speculation about a piece of jewelry that she seemed to be pretty attached to, and whether or not this might be a sign of a secret kinky relationship. More specifically, if she'd been wearing a day collar. Now, I'm not really sure who told them what a day collar was, if this was like from within the world of BDSM and then it like leaked out into more mainstream media, but even within the world of BDSM, not everyone knows what a day caller is because it is one very kind of narrow thing. So let's talk about exactly what a day caller is before we get into the rest of this story. So really quickly, a day caller is typically a discreet accessory that is meant to symbolize devotion and commitment within a DS relationship. You could use something like leather for this, like a leather core that's really common more with male submissives, but typically it's meant to look like an everyday piece of jewelry, typically a necklace, though people can also use things like say bracelets and call them a day collar. And the most common designs of this are just like, you know, maybe a plain chain with a ring around it or a lock, something that's subtle, but also perhaps has a little bit of like a discreet kinky motif to it. But the core concept behind a day collar, no matter if it's like a leather cord or like a 24 karat gold necklace, the point is that it is meant to be subtle and not obvious, something you can wear out every day without arousing any kind of suspicion or weird looks from the public, from your work, or from your family. So how do day callers and the prime minister of the UK end up in the same news story? Well, according to Gawker, Liz Truss has been well known for sporting a particular delicate gold chain necklace featuring a gold ring, which has been dubbed the Circle of Truss, which could either be a terrible pun on her name and promise of like trust and commitment to the people of the UK or it could be hinting at perhaps something else. And so as the story goes, people online believed this was more than just a simple fashion choice and started digging into more about Liz Truss's background. Quote, there's definitely a bit of theorizing going down. Something of a common theme with Truss, who has been shrouded by vague sex-related rumors for years. It started in 2005, when Truss had an 18-month affair with her fellow Tory MP and mentor Mark Field, which ended Field's marriage after the news came out. Truss stayed with her husband, but infidelity rumors followed her. In 2017, for example, Truss was named in a sex dossier of sexual allegations against 36 members of parliament. 
the allegations were entirely unconfirmed and even if true, were pretty banal. Most described adultery or workplace relationships, in Tress's case, quite Britishly, that she fornicated with male researchers whilst backbench MP. But how do these stories of infidelity tie into a potential BDSM relationship? Well, as the theory goes, people think that maybe in that 2005 affair, she was introduced to the kinkier side of life. And even though she ended that affair and stayed on with her existing marriage, maybe she wanted to take that into her marriage as sort of like a sign of her new commitment and devotion and just like as a way to be happy in that relationship. And maybe over time that led to a collaring. And maybe as well, it has this dual purpose of being like a big warning sign, a big, I don't know, like traffic cones around her neck of like this thing that's supposed to be both subtle but also recognizable enough to fu like function as a symbol of, hey, like I'm taken, don't approach me. I'm not allowed to interact with other men sexually because I'm owned. That's also sort of part of this. Well, I'm not sure how much I buy that, but the main piece of evidence in this is that Liz Truss wears this necklace a lot. Like if you go through her Instagram, she is wearing this in almost every photo. And even when it's not directly visible, you can kind of see like maybe part of the chain where it's like maybe under a sweater or something, but it's not necessarily the only thing she's ever been seen wearing since she got back together with her husband or even since 2017. So what it had looked like is essentially she had this one necklace that looked kind of like a collar that she was wearing for months and months and months at a time. And occasionally there would be like a second necklace that had sort of a green stone on it that she would also wear every once in a while. She also had this like other really big chunky necklace that also had an O-ring as part of it. You know, O-ring like story of O, I suppose, to these people because every time you have a circle in a piece of jewelry that has to mean BDSM now, I guess, but we'll, we'll get to that. So she has basically one really main necklace, a second necklace that comes out every once in a while, and then like this third wild card. And Liz Truss is kind of known for being a clothes horse. She is known for having a decent sense of fashion, which if, if you watch like Channel 4 and you see people like interview members of parliament, they are uh, not always the best dressers, I would say. However, going back through the history of her photos on Instagram and articles and newspapers and interviews and things, she tends to do this with jewelry. She has other pieces of jewelry that's like, you know, kind of a drippy necklace and like something that looks like has like kind of like maybe a stag antler on it, which people have also said, wait, that could still be a day collar. It's about swinging and stag vixen and yada yada. And it's like the theories just keep going. But it seems like she has this pattern where she will wear one thing for months and months and months and months. And then she gets a new one and then she wears that one for a really long time and then so on and so forth, right? Like she has a pattern to this. It's not like she's only ever worn this one thing for like five years and now people are going, hmm, that's weird. Why did that happen? And it could be, right? It could be that maybe she has a relationship that is BDSM or like kink adjacent and maybe her partner in the morning picks out her necklace for her. And most of the time he has like a favorite and then when he gets her a gift or something new to wear, then she wears a different necklace and maybe goes with it a little bit better. It could be something like that, where maybe it's not like a locking collar type thing, but it is like a symbol in their relationship to some degree. And the fact that Liz Truss and her associates and her representatives have been very reluctant to answer any questions about this and all they've said is that this is like a gift from her husband and they don't say where it came from or how long she's had it for or anything like that like that does lend to a little bit more of that conspiratorial thinking of okay why are they being so dodgy about answering this and because of that dodginess people have come up with theories about oh my god I have found where this necklace is from. And there is a theory that this necklace that she's been seen wearing is from a very famous collar maker called To Be His. 
And I looked into this, all right? I'll put them up side by side and you guys can make your own decision here. But I don't really think these look like the same thing. And people were like, oh my God, we found the smoking gun. This is her collar, we found it. And to me, it looks like her necklace, like the ring is a little bit flatter. It looks like the findings on it are different. The actual chain itself looks different. They do appear superficially similar. That does not mean they are the same thing or have the same meaning. Because one big question I have is because though you can really use any piece of jewelry as a day collar, is there any proof this is anything other than like a very simple, typical necklace chain? Like, is there a locking mechanism? Is there a lock on it? As far as I can tell, no photos of that. And we have a couple of photos where her outfit is a little bit like mussed up from maybe the weather or something or just a really long day. And you can see part of like the end chain of the necklace, of different necklaces. And they don't look like they're locking necklaces to me, so. I think it's a fun theory, but again, I'm not really buying it. I think that the much more likely explanation here is that as I already said, Liz Truss is a little bit of a close horse. She does like her fashion, but she just is not as fussed about her jewelry choices, right? Like the main thing is like the blouse, the shoes, the bag, whatever it is she's into. And the jewelry is kind of like, I have one thing that I really like and I'm gonna wear that all the time until I get bored of it or I find something else. I think that is a much, 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 much more understandable explanation than she is projecting a secret kink relationship onto the entire public of the UK whenever she's on national television. That just does not make any sort of sense to me. And this necklace could have meaning, right? It is a gift from her husband. However, gift giving of important jewelry as a sign of commitment or devotion in a long-term marriage or relationship is not something only kinky people do. I think we started doing this as a kink community because at least in sort of like Western society, jewelry and gifts of jewelry as a sign of devotion is a really big part of a lot of people's worldview, right? Like wedding rings. And a lot of people do compare day collars to wedding rings. And people get all sorts of jewelry for like important life things, right? You get rings, like promise rings and stuff, right? Like there's so many different uses of jewelry as important markers in a relationship or of time. It's not just a kink thing. So even though this story did eventually end up dying down, there was very much a commotion amongst the vanilla public when they learned about day callers and they started seeing them everywhere. So sadly, this new obsession over day callers outlasted both Truss and her competitor, Head of Lettuce. While that story was circulating in September and October, by the end of November, there was a viral tweet of somebody reporting that their quote, physician assistant for my surgery is an e-girl wearing a day collar, later posting a photo of said e-girl before deleting it. The comments under that post were filled with people going like, oh wait, oh what now? <laughs> and other people responding, oh, this is what a day caller is. Don't go down that rabbit hole. And again, just like with Truss, I don't know if this random e-girl is wearing a day collar or not. Like, you know, back in the 90s, there was huge overlap in the accessorizing fashions of goths and punks and BDSMers. And we have very much a similar crossover and overlap between e-girls and kinksters. And especially with the recent rise in high fashion and also in mainstream fashion of using fetish as kind of this new symbol of edginess and like latex being on the runway. Like it's not surprising that a degree of that has trickled down into kind of everyday online boutique e-girl brands. And if you go to these websites, you will see pages and pages and pages of chain necklace collars and chokers and padlocks. And even brands like Teddy Fresh have done handcuffed themed accessories. Like it is 
all over the place right now. And even the humble ring and chain design that Truss was sporting is something that is very popular amongst like the plant loving minimalist design blogger set. You know the people I'm talking about, right? The people whose number one social media app is Pinterest. <laughs> like it is something that is not owned by any particular group of people. Like I was out shopping the other day, just like around town and it was like the most banal white girl accessory place you could imagine. And they had rings with like chain link designs on them and like keys and keys and locks. And it's all, it's all very popular right now, especially. So we cannot really say anyone who is wearing a padlock or a key is like got anything to do with BDSM at this point. We can't really take these things at face value. And well, not being able to take something at face value as being kinky is how day callers are supposed to work. They're not meant to be this beacon to the whole world of like, hey guys, look at me, I'm kinky. I have a secret, not so secret BDSM relationship. Like, no, that's what wearing like a big old fuck off leather collar, like posture collar type thing is for. They are supposed to be the opposite of that. Day callers are supposed to be about being subtle, being passable in public in terms of not like having people go, hey, whoa, what's that over there? Like it's something you are supposed to be able to wear to your job, around your family, without, you know, HR getting involved or like maybe one of your parents asking a pointed question. They are supposed to be able to go under the radar so you can have this symbol of commitment and devotion for your relationship around you as other people are able to do with wedding rings and promise rings and all that other kind of stuff without, you know, putting it in other people's faces constantly. But since every Twitter addict and TikToker knows about day callers now, it seems like, they're not really able to be as subtle. And because everyone has a full on recording device in their pocket constantly, you never know when you might be part of the next viral video of day color compilations or something where you're just minding your own dang business on a train, trying to go to work, trying to do some errands or whatever, and somebody's like, hey, well, look at this person who's totally into BDSM. Or, you know, maybe you are at the dentist office and you gotta take it off to do an x-ray or at the airport. Like, you never know when somebody is going to record you and speculate about your relationship that you may or may not even actually have. And because that potential subtlety is lost, does that mean we're going to be now dealing with, you know, maybe your boss looking sideways at the necklace you wear every single day and have worn every single day since you got hired? Is this going to lead to awkward family conversations at Christmas or New Year's or Thanksgiving? I don't really know. And listen, I don't want to be too defeatist about this, but I just, for me, if day callers have lost their ability to be subtle and to be sort of stealthy, what are we doing? Like, what what's the next step after this? Like, do we keep wearing day collars? And I do wanna say, wearing a day collar still makes sense, right? I'm not literally saying we should all go back to wearing leather because like day collars are nice. They're subtle, you can wear them in the shower. There's tons of reasons to want to wear a day collar rather than a normal leather collar outside of like, I want to wear it because it's subtle. Like there's so many reasons behind it. So I get that. I'm not literally saying we should only wear leather from now on, but what does this mean if there is potentially now this long-term entering of a day collar into the zeitgeist, right? Like you remember what happened with Fifty Shades of Grey? That has not left us. That was a huge, huge, cultural talking point for a long time. And day callers are certainly not there yet, but when you look at what happened long term with Fifty Shades of Grey, suddenly everyone and their mom knew about DS contracts and Benoit balls. And maybe you don't wanna be having those conversations. And I do think that Fifty Shades is a little bit too much flack. I think the long term implications of that have not been as terrible as might have been feared. 
if day callers are losing one of their primary functions because it's kind of a known thing and now you have to deal with people being all up in your business about it which you maybe don't want what are we going to do after that and for me one of the problems with this is is that this is not coming part and parcel with a broader acceptance of BDSM. This is not people going, oh, hey, like kink relationships are totally normal and fine and everyone should get to do what they want as long as it's consensual and like, you know, that kind of thing is not happening. We are still dealing with the same level or even potentially a worse level of like pity and disgust and confusion towards BDSM as a whole and people are kind of reacting to seeing day caller is like this visual assault of like oh my god how dare you force your kink relationship onto the rest of the normal god-fearing public like if wearing a day caller is saying hey I have a kinky BDSM relationship that all of you need to know about why is that same logic not applied to a wedding ring? Because if you are thinking about this in a typical way where like marriage is where you're allowed to have sex and do all that other adult stuff, is wearing a wedding ring not saying, hey, we f like, is that not, is that not part of it? But nobody seems to be raising an issue with the wearing of wedding rings in public. Everyone just takes that as being normal. And I would love it if we could have day callers be accepted in that same way of like, oh, hey, like, that's cool. It's not my fucking business. Like, you don't go up to strangers wearing a wedding ring and say, hey, what's your favorite position? And in the same way, people should not be filming or photographing people with suspected day callers and then asking them pointed personal questions. And I think for me, part of this I realized was a little bit personal, right? Because I used to wear a collar and we're not gonna answer questions about that right now. You guys are still very invasive. That's my own personal business, but I used to wear a day collar and I wore that collar for a very long time. And you know, it was, it was you know, the classic, you know, very slim metal circlet around my throat essentially and it was very tight fitting and that did occasionally kind of like oh how do you take that off like I would get that every once in a while but I remember very distinctly there was a time when I used to go to a dance studio I remember there was a newer gentleman who had started going to this dance studio that I was going to and this dance studio was like primarily like queer women which is why I love the space so much and he was you know and I think more men should be open to like expressing their physicality not just through like contact sports like dance is great I think everyone should learn how to dance but this individual person noticed me and noticed my collar and the two times I saw this person you know after class and I could tell during class they were kind of like looking at me but afterwards, they were like, I was trying to put my shoes on and shit to get ready to go. And like, they unintentionally, I think, kind of cornered me a little bit in the room and kind of like, asked me some very pointed personal questions about the choker I was wearing and if it was a collar or not. And I didn't know what their intentions were. That was kind of a scary moment for me because I'm like, if you're somebody who's into BDSM, you kind of do the little sup nod, you know? Like, I even had an instructor that taught at that studio who also wore a day collar, but I never brought it up with them. <laughs> like, it was just sort of like, hey, we read game, recognize game, you know? Like, it was, we didn't really have conversations about it. We didn't need to, right? Like, I did, I did you know, if you're into BDSM, here's the pro tip. Do not ask people pointed questions about the thing they're wearing. You can just compliment it and say, hey, that looks really nice on you. Oh, I love that. Like, you don't even have to ask where it's from. Just be nice. And if you want to throw a little wink wink in there, like, you know what it is, do that, right? Not really that much pressure involved, not that invasive. But when you corner someone and ask them pointed questions about, hey, I know you're wearing a collar. What's that about? Just don't, just, just, just don't do it. And my hope really is that other people will not have to deal with that because that is a very scary and invasive and personal thing to have to deal with. I hope this is like a passing phase and 
collars and day collars will not be part of the typical news cycle and people will kind of forget about it and it won't end up being a thing that everyone and their mom ends up knowing about. And you know, maybe just to throw a little bit more positivity into that, I will add that there could be a silver lining, right? There could be maybe has yet to be awakened kinky folk that see a story about this or see a TikTok or something and they go, oh, hey, what's a day caller? And they Google it and through their Googling, maybe something happens and they read something and they go, wow, that actually sounds really cool. Maybe I wanna try a BDSM relationship. I didn't know that people really did stuff like this. And they end up trying it out and they end up adding this really wonderful thing to their relationships and and that would be nice you know i'm not against doing that or maybe even people that are like really anti bdsm or kind of just maybe not like super anti but are more kind of mildly like i don't know what that's all about and maybe they end up googling about day callers and maybe they read more about it and they read more about bdsm and they go you know it's not really my thing but i understand it a little bit more right like maybe maybe my strong negative prejudgment is misplaced that would be nice to see happen However, again, with the way things are currently going in terms of pity and disgust and just confusion about this, I don't really see either one of those things largely happening, but maybe it happens just a little bit and something good will end up coming out of this. I, again, like, I want to emphasize this. This is not really like a, oh my god, the world is ending and this is the worst thing to ever happen to the BDSM community since... Fifty Shades of Grey and the melting down. I don't think that. I don't think this is like an end of the world, you know, gotta, you know, batten down the hatches, lock the doors, all that. Like, I don't think that. I think this is maybe kind of a drop in the bucket of what I have seen happening a lot of BDSM activities and small aspects of it getting more normalized in mainstream culture without that paired understanding or acceptance of BDSM or acknowledgement of risk or awareness of risk or negotiation or the the sheer level of importance of consent, right? Like this to me goes along with the normalization of choking. And I kind of want to do an update video about that because I realized that maybe what vanilla people call choking and what we call choking could be different things. And that's an important part of this. But there's this normalization of certain things completely removed from other contexts. And I don't know, it just sort of feels weird. But I would love to know what y'all's thoughts about this are in a comment down below. Did you see this? Did you participate in it? Is it just like, fun conspiracy theory stuff is there more behind it that i missed please let me know because like again i'm not like i want to be sure because i feel like if i make a video about it people expect there's like this certain level of of anger that must be involved and i'm not really too concerned it's more of a huh this is interesting why is that why did that happen why did the vanilla public suddenly know about day callers and make it part of the news cycle like what's going on there it's more sort of like Provoked curiosity is maybe the term I would use for the feeling I'm feeling. Provoked curiosity is where I'm at. So let me know your thoughts in a comment down below. If you like this, if you want to see more from me, if not already, please do subscribe because I make videos twice a week about all sorts of kink and BDSM related topics, including reaction videos, BDSM 101 videos, deep dives into subjects. I literally have, what is it like a 50 minute long how to use FetLife tutorial. If you want to know more about how to get into the BDSM community, I have that as well. And then also I have a Patreon. So if you want to support what I do, the best way to do that is with Patreon. Thank you so, so much. If you do already support me there, it means the absolute world to me. And until I see you all next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.